Welcome everybody to another Coaching Focus. My name's Lee Fletcher, I'm Head of Content Development at The Coaching Manual. And as always, I'm, I'm joined by Stephen Crane, our Head of Player Development. How are you doing, Crane? It? Good, thank you, Lee. Good to see you. And today we're actually joined by Carl Wilde. How are you doing, Carl? I'm really good, Lee. Thanks. Thanks for having me as well, Carl. No, you're welcome. Um, where are you working at the moment, Carl? Where are you coaching? Uh, so, we, in terms of my coaching role, I'm at a, uh, a Premier League club working in the girls' academy. Uh, so, I'm just working in the foundation phase at the moment. So, I oversee the foundation phase. So, we have a couple of age groups uh, within that. And then I predominantly work with the under-12s at the moment uh, within that. Fantastic. Right. As always, Carl, we'll get straight into it. So, we're going to today Great. watch um, a, a session by Anthony Limbrick. So, I'll just share my screen with you guys. We're going to look at forward runs to support and we're going to look at it from anti Limbrick session. So just give you a brief overview to set up 15 minutes around 12 players, an array of balls. Um, and as you can see, 25 by 25 there. But as always, it's best if Anthony just explains it for us. So today, forward runs with and without the ball. Greens are going to be playing in this area together, light blues playing together, dark blues playing together. What I need is, is two people from each colour, so two greens, two light blues, two dark blues, standing on a mannequin with a football. So you can only play off your colour, alright, you can only play off your colour. So if I'm a blue, I start in the middle, I receive off Mark. Mark, where are you going to go now? In the middle. Mark goes in the middle. Now my job here is to travel to any of the mannequins on the outside. So I'm going to travel with the ball to the mannequin on the outside. What colour am I playing? Blue, because I can only play blue. Zamani comes out wherever, plays in there. Where do I go once I've passed it? Into the middle. Then I'm moving around in the middle, waiting for my colour to then go out and play. Go and find and travel as quick as you can to the free mannequin. Ready? Let's go, play. Let's go. Good, might have to go and find another one. Good, Hilsey, travel out. Good, play it in, good, and then travel out, good Ed. Good, it's going to be busy in the middle, good, travel out to a free mannequin. Good, fire him in though, fire him in Will. We're going to do forward runs with and without the ball. So we'll start off with a technical warm up, working with the players on plenty of touches, um, receiving and passing, but then having plenty of opportunities to run with the ball. And stop there, relax, back in the middle. Good, if you've got a ball on the outside. Okay, good, so running with the ball. If there's big gap and there's a big space, I want to travel at pace into here. If it's tight, you might have to dribble a little bit. Before you get the ball though, you've got to do what? Scan and check your shoulder so you know where to go and where the spaces are. I know where you're going before you get it. Play, let's go. Have you checked, have you checked? Good, Ed. Good, Ed, then travel out at pace, good. Good, Jack Shiner. Drive, drive. Big touch out of your feet there for space. Good, Carl. Bigger touch. Bigger touch. We had to travel to different mannequins with different colours on them, so there was a bit of visual awareness. You had to check where your man was before you could travel into that space. Now you can't go to a mannequin that's got the same colour as you. So if you come in receive, you can't go to one that's got the same colour as you. OK? Got to check your shoulder now. Let's go. Good, Will. Check it. Check it, Will. Good. And you checked as the ball travelled. Now, it's a little bit one pace though. You might just jog in, jog in, bang, and then you're changing your pace and to come out. Do you understand? Then it's a quick movement to the mannequin. Then you might relax slowly. So sometimes change the tempo of the play as well. Do you understand? Let's go. Come on. Good, Amani. Like that. Good. At pace, Mark. Mark. At pace. Quicker. Quicker. In terms of running with the ball, even before you have to run with the ball, what do you need to do? Scan and check, know what you've got to do with it before you get it. Important point, because if you don't know already, then you're making up your mind while well, you've got what at your feet. While well, you've got the ball at your feet. Sometimes that's a little bit too late, that's when you get caught on the ball. Okay, so that was the, the first part, the warm-up. So Craney, I'll come to you first. What were your thoughts around the practice? Yeah, I thought the practice was really good. I think just to start off with, it's a topic that you don't actually see me delivered that much. Uh, forward runs, you know, I think it's quite rare that you actually plan a whole session around forward runs. Normally, you do a counter-attack in practice or something like that, which obviously includes forward runs. But for a session or a practice to just be on the topic, I thought was really, really good and something that I need to think about coaching more in the future. 
Um, I thought the setup of the session was really good. The middle box was great because it then encouraged players to move as well, made it a bit more realistic to the game. It would have been very simple just to get in and passing around in the square, passing and moving anywhere without the mannequins, dribble out to a cone and dribble back in like we've seen before. But I think the box in the middle and the colours of the you know mannequins around made it a bit more realistic for the players. The mannequins made it challenging because, like you said, different coloured mannequins, the players you know had to come in the box, come out of the box, get their you know, head up to receive and scan. I thought the way he coached it was really good. I thought, obviously, we only seen a really short clip there, but there was a lot of coaching points in there. And the key one for me, what I wrote down, was dribbling versus running with the ball. It's one of my pet hates when you have a player out wide and you've worked really hard to get the ball out wide and they've got loads of grass in front of them and they take 20 little touches. It's one of my pet hates. I'm thinking, just get the ball out of your feet and run properly with the ball. So that was really good that he picked on that. But no, I thought it was a really good session. I thought the size of it worked well. The players were moving all the time. They didn't really stop and really liked it. Yeah, I agree with a lot of those points. Carl? Yeah, I totally agree, agree with all those points. Uh, from my point of view, I, I like practices that are busy in terms of a bit of chaos. And I like practices that are, they've got loads of freedom for the players as well. So I think that really helped uh, in terms of that. So there's um, traffic in terms of all the players coming across players and so forth. So the ball had to be manipulated. And that's when it's that dribble, when it's that running with the ball, which I thought was fantastic. Lots of opportunities for the players to actually practice the topic, which I thought was great as well. And in terms of, at first, when you look at the setup, I was a little bit worried about, is it going to be a little bit too structured in terms of go there to there and so forth? But there wasn't in terms of identifying which managing, mannequin to go for and so forth. So I thought that was, that was really, really good. My, my only thought about it was, and still maybe trying to get my head around a little bit, was what, could we have narrowed the focus a little bit more? Because he's talking about, uh, forward movement or forward runs with the ball and without the ball. So, especially when I work with the younger players, I've probably narrowed that down to one or the other. Uh, and just looking ahead of the practices that are coming up, I, I'll probably go into that a little bit deeper uh, afterwards. Um, just thought I thought that the focus could be a little bit narrower, but the information that he did give as well was really good. And he's, I thought his coaching manager was fantastic. Setup was perfect. The players just went straight into it. I thought it was a really good practice. Yeah, it's very, um, very good, Anthony. To be fair, um, I, I like that. I like something that you you picked up on there, and I want to. I want you to kind of elaborate, if you can, a bit more yeah. Carl, on on that word chaos. Because yeah. we often look at sessions and they look kind of messy, but also some of the messiest sessions are probably the best ones because of the decision making. Is it? It's probably it's absolutely its peak. So, can you elaborate a bit on that for us about why you use chaotic sessions like that? Yeah, I think um, just to try and get it more closer to uh, a game-like situation in terms of there will be some sort of traffic going on during the game. Obviously, in that particular warm-up practice, we, we don't want it being opposed, but at the same time, we don't want it where it's just a simple decision for them every single time and the ball comes. It's that sort of constant practice where the ball comes in, same angle, same space. There's always that space in front of them to play the pass or to move into because that's, that's just not game realism. But at the same time, you don't want to make it too difficult, too early for the players in terms of being that, that oppositioning. So just by having other players doing the same thing as another group of players just brings in that chaos and that traffic. So as soon as they receive the ball, that picture that they see in front of them will be completely different to when they received it previously and the next time and the next time and the next time. Whereas if we don't include that chaos and that, and that traffic, then sometimes we can just replicate the same pictures over and over and over and over again. So I think it's really, really important. I think as coaches, sometimes we worry too much about practices looking good because if, from the outside, we're all doing what they're meant to be doing and then we think the practice is working when in fact probably no learning is taking place. So I think it's really important that, that we get that and it does get a bit chaotic and it does get a bit mad. And I think especially for the younger players, that's really important. Do you... That was coming up to the point as well before, Carl, wasn't it, Flecky, as well, about the one where you say, OK, you've got to come in the square, turn out, receive, and then you have yeah. to dribble that mannequin. I think that yeah. practice gives give them a bit of variation as well. So there wasn't just that Absolutely. one mannequin where you come in, you receive, and you back foot, and you have to go there. I think it was actually go back where it come from if you want, or you can do you know whatever you want. And I think that added a lot more chaos to the practice. Yeah. What's your thoughts, Flecky? Yeah, I think... I liked it. I really liked it, um, as a, especially the warm in terms of those, that detail of getting into it before we actually get into the probably meat and bones of the, of the actual practice and the structure part of it. I really liked it. I think for me, similar to Ukraine in terms of that detail, I really like the focus on that detail. And one thing that I picked up, he says, know where you go before you get it. 
And I really like that that one simple line. Know where you go before you get it. And then the sh actually breaking it down to understanding why do you need to know where you're going to go before you actually get it. And it's more referencing to looking, checking for space, checking for the opposition, checking for teammates, checking where the ball's coming from. And all those references, but he's done it in one simple term. And sometimes as coaches, and, and I'm guilty of this more than anybody, is that we give so much information that the players just become overloaded with it. And rather than just having a simple term and saying, this is what I want you to do, they kind of have some understanding of what they're looking at. And then you can start picking it apart because he did. He started talking about checking, scanning, looking for the opposition, looking for the, the space more than anything, the mannequin of where you're going to go to. And for me, it wasn't, it was preparing them for the running with the ball stuff and running without the ball because he was just making sure that they understand the technical requirements that's needed at that academy, Southampton, which obviously is a great academy. Um, so for me, that was one thing that I really did pick up on. So, Craney, something that you talked about, the one of the very first things that you, you said was running with the ball and dribbling with the ball. Just explain to us a little bit about the differences, because I think a lot of people probably don't understand the differences or maybe don't understand the nuances between the two and what you understand of that and, and how you would coach that as well. Yeah, to be honest, like I said before, it's something that I don't think a lot of coaches pick up on. Okay, I think sometimes we see if a player's got grass in front of them and they just run like and they take two or three touches and get into the space. I think we see that dribbling when it's not, it's actually running with the ball. Um, dribbling's more in a tight area, so when you've got to take small touches and you've got to you know manipulate the ball to maybe create space to to get round someone to play a little one-two or to get past someone in a one-v-one. Running with the ball is a lot more. Listen, if you've got grass in front of you, get out your feet and travel. And that's what it is. You know, there's no glossing it up. That's exactly what it is. And I think it's really good, actually, because that practice, you can do both of them. So I think you can make forward runs by dribbling, which, like Carl was mentioning before, when it is a bit chaotic and it is a bit tight, you might have to, you know, move the ball and get around somebody. But when you do turn out and you can see your mannequin and his grass in front of you, get out to it quickly. So I think that's the main difference. Of the, you know, I think it's very simple. If he's small touches on the ball, you dribble him. If he's big touches and he's grass in front of you, it's running with the ball. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. Carl, coming to you then with that then, because I think this is something yep. that's really interesting for me is, do you think as coaches we have a responsibility to let players understand this then? Because I actually feel that we're probably doing a disservice to the, to the players, that we're always talking about dribbling, ball mastery. Everybody seems to want to be a number 10 nowadays. And it's almost dropping into these spaces to then turn and then go and dribble when the reality is the game needs both sides of the coin. Do you think we have we have a responsibility as coaches to be able to teach this and let players know what the differences are and that being having one without the other is not necessarily a bad thing? Yeah, I think you've got... So if we, if we look at that in terms of, let's say, we're driving the ball then, in term, we do quite a bit of it in terms of the academy where we're working at because it can change the game completely. It can it can get a player from a certain area of pitch to a different area of pitch very, very quickly. Um, when, when I first started looking at running with the ball or driving the ball, we actually always had our, our heads or our thoughts around just going forward with it in terms of getting us from one end of the pitch to the other end of the pitch. But having a look at it over the last few years we're doing quite a lot of work not just going forward but going across the pitch in terms of driving the ball because it can have such an influence in terms of the opposition in terms of shifting defenders and shifting units and uh, creating space and so forth not just for yourself but obviously for your teammates as well and especially the way the modern game is going in terms of the physicality and the speed of the game and I think this driving the ball is really really important and then that just links into another different aspect of the game in terms of what players actually have to do. So I think definitely we should be able to give them all options in terms of all different elements of the game and in terms of what may be required against different opposition, in terms of different circumstances within a game. Yeah, I'm 100% on ball manipulation at a young age. We do loads of what we call as individual possession. So we, we, we do lots of work when, the, when that player has the ball. And that driving, that running with the ball comes into that. In terms of, because if you can get past the player, what you what's your next thing that you're going to do? And usually, if you've managed to get past that player, that's usually opening up a little bit of space for you. So again, driving the ball is really, really important for us. Yeah. Do you know what? Like before you start that, I think that's a really key point. I think we always think that we're running the ball, and dribbling forward, get forward, get forward. And you just have been thinking then, as Carl's been speaking then, Carl, like Kyle Walker for you know, City, for example. The way you run the ball inside or 
what drives with the ball inside to create space. It's such a key part to the way to the way the City play because then you might have the Brony dropping in or something like that, to, and it just creates space wherever. So you know, I think it's something that I need to think about as well as coach. Great point that really, Carl, about actually driving with the ball don't have to just be that way all the time. It can be maybe inside to create space for someone to drop in. So really good that. What's your thoughts about that, Flecky? No, I agree. I think I think it's spot on, you know, and maybe again that's something that we're not thinking about of what Carl just said there about driving forward and driving sideways and, and really trying to um, move and shift that position. For, for me as well, I think there's other two other things and one was actually mentioned in, in the video about change of tempo and we know that dribbling, running with the ball completely changes the tempo of any game. If we've got that space and we can take that space really, really quickly, then the, the tempo of the game completely changes. And that's why counter-attacks are really, really exciting and, and change that tempo within that transitional moment. I also think for me as well is what we're actually trying to achieve with dribbling and running with the ball. And one of the biggest things that we talk a lot about out here is to engage the rival, to engage the opposition and almost taking that touch or that dribbling to trying to attract the opponent to create the space behind and to the side of them. And now can we get the support around the ball or maybe away from the ball? And that's something that we talk a lot about and that's actually one of the concepts that we work on at the club that I'm at as well of engaging the rival to then find other passes to either side to then penetrate going forward. So not everything has to be taking on a player taking on the opposition it's about moving the opposition finding passes or even finding dribbling to go into the space and all those things and just really engaging the rivals and, and trying to engage them to come to you rather than you always going to them and that's something that we talk about I don't know if you guys have got any opinions on that I'd like to hear your thoughts on that Carl? Yeah, no, again, it's something that we touch upon in terms of actually just attracting, we call it attracting players, because yeah. I think it's a, key, it's a key part of the game as well, because if you can just attract someone out of, and get them to come out of the position where they're at, it just opens up lots of opportunities for you. So there's a lot of key stuff as well. If we go back to that driving in the ball, it's, it's having that right touch that enables you just to come and attract the opposition player, and then the next touch, can you just get round them at pace? So it, you're not even dribbling, you're just shifting the ball in terms of its direction ever so slightly because that, that defender's coming at you, you just shift it to the right, shift it to the left and you pass them within, within a few few seconds. And then again, because they've come out of that position, it, then that, somebody else has then got to come out of position as well to come and engage you. It then usually opens up space for at least one of your teammates. So I think, again, it's a really key point in terms of it, it's running with the ball, but running with the ball under control. Yeah. and making sure that when it's the right time, you can just shift it one way or the other just to open the pitch up for you. Yeah, I like that word, shift. I think, Craney, you talk a lot about that, don't you, about shift and shoot and, and how important that can be in shooting exercises. But like you said, Carl, you can use it that way as well.